What's up, you guys? Welcome to the January 22nd edition of NBA 3-Ball, presented by Establish the Run. I'm your host, Mike Gallagher. Getting ready to discuss a pretty small slate. Not even really going to talk about that. Pretty much going to talk about the news. Really want to set you up for a Friday more than anything. Uh, we'll do it in 10 minutes as usual. Hit the thumbs up for us, please, and subscribe. Going to start with the Rockets, and we've got a lot moving parts here. Uh, first, the small detail is P.J. Tucker hurt his abdomen did not return, but he's going to play according to him. We'll see what that that turns out to be true. But the big headline here is Christian Wood will not play after he sprained his ankle, played through it, and, and during his post-game press conference, he said that his ankle was like swelling up on him like during that time. So, I mean, major props for going out there and playing through that. But he's going to miss time. He said he's going to do all he can to get back out there, but it just can't happen. I mean, you roll your ankle the way he did where his foot was like sideways uh, and a guy his size, it's it's trouble. So nothing you can really do there. Uh, you start with the first thing is DeMarcus Cousins, and he's been so bad. Uh, he's at just 32% at the rim on the season. That's like a bit, that's beyond abysmal. Like that's like half of what like normal is or what good is. You know, 60% is like kind of bad. But um, yeah, he needs, he needs to play better. Uh, he doesn't really have the burst, but... He's still going to be able to produce defensive stats, and they have to get in the ball. This is the way this offense is working. After the game, Wood was saying, like, oh, yeah, we're trying to develop our pick-and-roll game, and, like, now they have to start. Oh, Deep is going to get from both sides. But just sticking with Cousins, I mean, from a DFS perspective, like, you kind of have to play him and then hope he doesn't get <laughs> a double tech in this game. Um, and then also, I would look to Jay Sean Tate. I mean, he's played really well. He has 46 minutes on the season without a center next to him. Tucker was out there for 36 of those, but Tate's almost been more of the five. Uh, just a big body dude. So I really like what he's been doing. He's 17, 10, and 2 per 36 in that 46 minute sample I mentioned. So he should be really active, especially if Tucker's abdomen's an issue. And then Oladipo also, man. I mean, he has just big volume as a pick and roll guy. He had 18 pick and roll positions in the first game. Still had 13, which is like right league leader stuff. You know, 14, 15 is like put you in the lead lead. So they clearly want him to be pick and roll dominant. And we'll see if that changes without Wood, who was his main pick and roll guy. So their offense is going to probably be a little disjointed, but they're going to really, really lean on him. I think Eric Gordon may have a bigger role in this game today too. So... Uh, should be fun. A lot of a lot of really good DFS targets uh, against a, kind of a bad Pistons defense, and this team's on a back to back too. Both these teams. So, uh, yeah, there's a, probably a lot of really good DFS targets in that game. Moving to the Bulls, Wendell Carter Jr. is doubtful. He had a freak collision with Denzel Valentine in five on five at practice on Wednesday. Uh, it sounded like he's going to be okay. He's kind of trending in the right direction, but he's doubtful. So you're probably going to sit that one out. Obviously, the first thing you think of is Daniel Gafford, who's been called upon at times, has played pretty well. He's not the greatest rebounder. Great shot blocker. So if you're looking for a stream for blocks, he's your man for sure, uh, if your league's somewhat decent. Um, but then really, the, the main thing to me that struck me was Laurie Markkinen. He's been really good as a center. Last year, he was he had got like no jump uh, statistically per minute. But this year, 64 minutes, he's played without a center next to him. And he's been great. Per 36, 34, 8, and 1, 28 usage rate, 74 true shooting at 117 pace. They're playing fast. I and mean, that's that's delicious. Uh, you get a Hornets team that is not that great on the interior size. I mean, they're going up against, they're going to see a lot of P.J. Washington at the 5. This team plays a lot of small items. So it basically plays right into Chicago's hands to play lower small. So if I'm Donovan, I'm starting Gafford, putting him out there against what looks like Cody Zeller, who's probable, by the way. Um, so I'd start him, and then i fill in Laurie. I would close with Laurie. I think that it's a really big spot for Laurie. Front end of back-to-back, his conditioning's up. Don't forget, last week when he returned, he was calling for subs uh, to come out of the game. So uh, I think Laurie Marketing, he's going to be one of my favorite plays today. And should add, too, if you're playing Laurie at the 5, that opens up minutes for Thad Young, Otto Porter, Patrick Williams, maybe even Denzel Valentine, who Donovan's talked up, talked up Archie Diakno a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, a lot. Of, if you're looking for cheap guys, like you know maybe Thad or whoever, in this game's I kind of like it to stack. The Bulls' perimeter defense has been really bad. Uh, we've seen Shea roast them, saw Old Depot roast them. Their pick and roll defense is the worst in the NBA after it was one of the best. It was, it was the best. So uh, I kind of like this game. Moving to the Raptors, Pascal Siakam is questionable for Friday with a groin issue. He Nick Nurse said after the game that he thought he was fine. And then he did not practice on Thursday. So something to watch. I think he's going to play. Just being careful, getting extra treatment. If he's not playing, you would assume OG is going to probably slide over 
to the four a little bit more often, and that would also give Aaron Baines a little bit more leash since there probably won't be as many small ball lineups as possible. Uh, also of note, uh, Nurse had kind of said he almost regretted not going back to Aaron Baines in the fourth quarter uh, because Chris Boucher kind of didn't have it rolling, which we kind of knew. We, like I mentioned in the last three ball, a uh, tough spot for him against Bam and Olenek and all that size out there. But if we'd see a little bit of Yuta, and uh, he also said he wanted to get Matt Thomas out there uh, but he couldn't quite pull the trigger on it, so I would pu- put him in the rotation uh, if they did have to go smaller here. So the Nuggets, they should get Michael Porter Jr. back. Mike Malone was saying on Thursday that he's, they still need to ke- clear a conditioning part of the protocol, which, side note, may have been maybe why Seth Curry didn't play on Wednesday. Anyways, uh, yeah, you would assume he starts. Por- uh, Porter Jr. was called a starting small forward by Malone, so you would think Barton goes back to the bench. Maybe they have one game cushion to kind of get him up to speed. But his return obviously puts a huge dent in a lot of people. Uh, Monte Morris for one. P.J. Dozier as well. Probably won't see as much Michael Green and Paul Millsap taking all the four minutes because we know Porter Jr. can play some forward there. Isaiah Hartenstein might lose a bit of playing time too. So it's really been uh, kind of a team effort to replace Porter Jr., but I would expect guys like Jokic and those guys to be fine. Jamal Murray continues to play through this right elbow injury as well. I uh, had a padding on his elbow um, additionally, and he actually threw it off during the game. He, he's struggling. He says it, 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 sh- it hurts when he shoots, so um, yeah, he, he's he's tough right now to, to play in DFS. The Celtics are not going to have Jason Tatum for one more game on Friday against the Sixers. Sounds like he should be out there for Sunday. Uh, and then also Kemba Walker. His minutes cap got bumped up to 25 to 28. He may not hit that. He hit 22 in the last game. So I expect it to be closer to that 25 mark. But still, Brad Stevens has said he basically wants him to use more possessions and they want his teammates to make it easier on him. He has a 40 usage rate in two games. He's certainly chucking. Brad Stevens wanted him to close, pulled him out early in a rotation earlier in the game to make sure he was going to have enough minutes to close. So uh, they clearly want to get him going. He looks pretty good, especially early in games. Ben Simmons is going to be guarding Jalen Brown, so they're going to really need Kemba to step up. So, um, you know, I haven't seen his price yet, but he's probably an option if he's, you know, in the sixes or maybe if he's in the fives. I definitely like him. Into the basketball side of things for Thursday, the Bucks dropped it at home to the Lakers. Just too much, too much LeBron. But with the Bucks, nothing going on here. Again, just the big trend is. Budenholzer playing his guys, big minutes. Giannis fouls out in the last couple seconds, still gets to 35 minutes. Holiday 38. I mean, this is not the Budenholzer that we've come to know and hate. (laughs) So uh, that's a good sign for their DFS. Again, it matters who they play, right? We saw them play Giannis 40 minutes against the Nets. Like, matchup really matters. If it's a tight spread in a national TV game, like, that you could probably up their minutes uh, if you're trying to figure out how much they're going to play. Uh, Pat Compton saw some late minutes as they went small without Brooke Lopez, but yeah, other than that, not too much going on here. Great win from the Lakers. LeBron just killed it. his first 30-point game, which was kind of almost surprising, but really took it over offensively, shot a lot of open threes, just made play after play after play, just really dominated this game with uh, AD having a little tougher matchup with this one. Uh, and yeah, other than that, not too much here. We saw a little Al- uh, Alex Caruso late. Saw a few more minutes of 80 at the 5, which I think is still a good thing we, we want to see more often. Uh, Harrell had some big plays late. He's been really good in isolation when he gets face-up stuff, too. So, yeah, uh, Lakers, again, another team that has a pretty solidified rotation. And that's going to do it for today. I'm hoping I can solo to, on Friday to do recap some of the, the late games. And uh, we'll catch you next time.